Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening, this is Dr. Pradhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the same problem multicollinearity issue. So, in the last lectures, I have discussed or you can say I have highlighted briefly the structure of multicollinearity, how it comes to the econometric modeling issue, and uh, what are the shapes and uh, you know problem altogether, and how you have to go for its solutions. So, let let me st uh, start with uh, highlighting once again this particular problem. So, in the last class I, I mentioned very clearly that multicollinearity is a multivariate issue. The problem will be there when the when the system is about you can say three variables at, at a time or so more than three variables. If the system consists of only two variables, then multicollinearity may not be a means it will not come at all. So, that means it will start only either in the trivariate case or you can say multivariate case. So, now we like to see what is all about the structure of multicollinearity. You know, so since it is a multivariate problem, so we will first write what is multi multivariate problem all about. So, multivariate is a, multivariate is a system where there is one dependent uh, structures and series of independent structures. So, we have mentioned in the last class the series of man, uh, series of independent is recognized as a x1, x2 up to you know xk. Okay, xk. So this the model setup is like this. Okay, so that means the modeling behavior will be like this. So this is supported by a beta 1 co, uh, beta 1 uh, you know coefficient this is supported by beta 2 coefficient this is supported by beta k coefficient you know for multivariate problems so we we may not have a serious issue or we should not think much about this beta 0 coefficient that is you know intercept uh, uh, intercept terms so that is you know supporting co to component but our major concern on all beta coefficients that is beta 1 beta 2 up to beta k so that means the co uh, coefficient of independent variables, direct independent variables, not the intercept terms. Okay, so that's why I have not mentioned here anything about the beta zero. So we have we have to target. So the beta one heads, beta two heads, up to beta k head is our issue. Okay. So now, uh, what is all about this multicollinearity? There are many ways you can define the term multicollinearity, but the simplest way to define multicollinearity is that it is having the linear relationship among the regressor or independent variables. So, that means, uh, it is a problem uh, having the linear relationship among the regressor. So, the linear relationship among the regressor that is the core ideology or fundamental issue of multicollinearity, the linear you know uh, relationship among the regressor not non-linear. So, we are discussing the linearity issue of regressor. So, if there is a, any such relationship then obviously then this is a issue of multicollinearity. That means, the game to all together is like this. So, that means obviously by default x 1 we are expecting that x 1 has a influence on y, x 2 has a influence on y, x k has a influence on i. So, I uh, for this uh, you know little bit you know interesting. So, I will put uh, another variables in the system, then we will call it beta 3 heads, beta 3 uh, ok, beta 3 coefficient. So, now uh, you know uh, 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 what is our uh, uh, usual procedures, usual procedure is to set the regression model. So, beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 uh, continue up to beta k x k then uh, beta k x k plus u. So, obviously by ULS technique we have the estimated models beta y head equal to beta 0 head plus beta 1 head x 1 plus beta 2 head x 2 okay, plus uh, plus beta k head 
x k ok. So, this is how the estimated model we have received. So, now you see here see the moment you will have this estimated model then obvious standard uh, standard issue is that uh, earlier we are checking the significance of the parameters and the significance of the overall fitness of the models ok. So, that means significance of parameters that to beta 1 beta 2 up to beta k and significance of the overall fitness of the model that is r square adjusted r square then you can say followed by f statistic etcetera etcetera. So, that uh, means it includes ESS, RSS, and TSS. So, these are the you know components which will take care the overall fitness issue and here uh, the you know beta 0 head uh, then variance of beta 0 uh, variance of beta 0 head beta 1 head variance of beta 1 head beta 2 head variance of beta 2 head then standard error of beta 1 head standard error of beta 2 head then obviously t of beta 1 head t of beta 2 head these are the components which will take care the significance of the parameters. So, now include uh, with with this so uh, right now what we have discussed is the significance of the parameters parameters and second is the overall fitness of the models ok let's see overall overall fitness of the fitness of the overall fitness of the model so that is uh, the overall fitness of the model that true you know r square so or adjusted r square f statistic etc etc but so far as the multicollinearity is concerned, so far as the multicollinearity is concerned, so we have to check the linear relationship among the regressors. Okay, linear re re relationship among the regressor. Let's see here. So now that means y is a function of x1, x2 up to xk. Okay, so that means we have we have to check whether all these beta beta one head, beta two head, beta two head, and you know beta k head are significant ok significant. So, then r squares and followed by adjusted r square has to be you know statistically high and significant ok statistically high and significant this is the oh, one issue this is second issue till now we are much concerned about these two issues. But now suppose a uh, suppose a multicollinearity issue is concerned. So, I have mentioned what is all about this multicollinearity multicollinearity is the is having the linear relationship among the regressor. So, now we have k number of regressors. So, that means x 1, x 2, x 3 up to x k. So, linear relationship means then x 1 upon x 2, x 1 upon x 3, x 1 upon x 4, x 1 upon x k. Then again x 2 upon x 3, x 2 upon x 4, x 2 upon x 5 or x 2 upon x k. Similarly, there may be uh, 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 again uh, x 3 uh, uh, upon x 2, x 3 upon you know x 1, then x 3 upon x 4, x 3 upon x 5 then x 3 upon x k like this there are various structures you will find. So, we like to know uh, uh, whether this uh, this association is there or not if if it is not there then you are in the right track if it is there then you are in the wrong track you have to come to the right track. So, that is how we need to have solution provided your objective must be very very specific ok. So, that means so, third interesting thing we like to observe for this particular multicollinearity problem is that so, covariance of x 1 upon x 2 ok or correlation uh, correl correlation or covariance between x 1 upon x 2 then uh, co covariance correlation between x 1 x 2 or x 1 uh, x 3 then co co correlations correlation between x 1 x 4 like this then correlation between x 2 x 3 ok. So, it will continue correlation of x 2 x k ok. So, this is how we have to first catch all these post that means we have to apply the permutation combination you get to know oh, how many relation such relationship we can uh, have in this particular system if your system is all about k number of variables. So, now for the simplicity we will restrict our model to only 3 variables. So, that we can we can have the you know accurate discussions otherwise if you have k number of variables then the problem is very very complex very very you know uh, you know uh, a um, pathetic issue uh, all about. So, now what you have to do? So, for the simplicity we will take y equal to function of uh, x 1 and x 2 ok x 1 and x 2. So, let us assume that this is the uh, models we have right now in the system. So, now uh, the problem is very very simple and very very easy to detect so far as the multicollinearity concern because here only such relationship is uh, uh, you know with respect to x 1 and x 2 
ok. So, in fact, uh, this is also not accurate to detect the multicontinuity means most of the components we cannot observe from this particular issue. Let us take have with it you know uh, another two variables. So, let us say x 3 and x 4. So, ok. So, now the uh, model is all about where k equal to k equal to 5 Mm, the, uh, sorry k equal to number of variables in the system. So, independent variables k equal to 5 independent variables and n equal to forget something 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 ok. So, y is uh, y is 1 dependent variable and x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 is 4 independent variables all together there are 5, five variables in the systems ok. So, now so as usual the coefficients are beta 1 uh, beta 2 beta 3 then beta 4 forget about beta 0 coefficient ok beta 0 beta 0 is, is uh, intercept concept. So, we are not bothering much about this one right now for this multi coordinate problem. So, now what we have to do here is so we we like to uh, highlight the uh, multi coordinate issue. So, that means uh, this is one and second is the r square issue and uh, f statistic issue third third problem is here. So, we like to know uh, in, in this particular jargon. So, we have correlation between x 1 and x 2 ok, then correlation between you know x 1 uh, correlation between x 1 x 3 then correlation between x 1 x 1 x 4 ok, then correlation between x 2 x 3 then correlation between x 2 x 4 then finally, correlation between you know x 1 x 4. Uh, x 1 x 4 is already there. So, x 3 x 4 ok x 3 x 4. So, these are the 6 possibilities uh, are there for this particular setup ok. So, that means, if your uh, uh, game boundary is with respect to y and 4 independent variable then oh, oh, so far the multi coordinate is concerned then we have an additional problem we have to we have to observe or we have to investigate is that having correlation among the regressor. So, that means, in this particular setup, so we like to know what is the correlation between x 1 and x 2, x 1 x 3, x 1 x 4, x 2 x 3, x 3 uh, x 2 x 4 and x 3 x 4. By by any chance, if all these values are equal, uh, equal and is equal to 0, then there is no such multi coordinate issue. So, this problem is absolutely free from multi coordinate. However, if all are may equal uh, uh, it may not equal obviously. So, uh, if it is not equal and not equal to 0 then obviously, it is a serious problem. So, okay, what you remember one thing. So, we know correlation coefficient is denoted as r for correlation x 1 x 2 you will call it x 1 x 2 then this is correlation x 1 x 3 we will call it uh, r x 1 uh, x 3 ok. So, uh, otherwise you can call it r 1 2 r 1 3 r uh, 1 4 then r 2 r 2 1 r two, sorry r 2 3 2 1 r, r 1 2 same because it is symmetric in nature. So, 2 3 uh, r r 2 4 ok r 2 4 then r 3 4. So, these are the possible uh, possible correlation coefficient these are possible correlation coefficient so by any chance by any chance if okay by any chance if you have you know uh, if you have like you know r12 uh, r12 equal to r13 equal to r14 equal to r24 equal to r34 okay three for such possible 1 2 1 3 1 4 r 2 4 r 3 4 ok. So, these are the possible solution r 1 2 1 3 then 1 4 2 4 2 2 4 3 4 and in fact 2 3 is there. So, there is another item r 2 3 ok. If these are these are these are all equal to not equal to 0 if it is 0 then no problem uh, if it is uh, not equal to 0 then there is a multi collinearity multi multi collinearity ok. If this is if case 1 case 1 ok, if case 2 if r 1 2 uh, equal to r 1 3 equal to r 1 4 equal to r 2 4 
equal to R three four is equal to R uh, 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 R okay not equal to 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 two three is not e equal to say zero. Then obviously uh, obviously it should be equal to zero. Then uh, we can put like this R one two equal to R one three. R equal to oh, R equal to one four R equal to two four or two three R equal to two four R equal to three four is equal to zero. Instead of writing this one, it's better to write this one. If that is the case, then it is no multicondensate. Okay, so that means. So the moment you have a system where y is dependent variable, x1, x2, x3, x4 are independent variables. So uh, uh, as usual, you have to go for specification test by uh, judging the significance of the parameters beta1, beta2, beta3, beta4, and in the other side, we have to judging the overall fitness of the model that is R square, adjust R square, F star T, followed by ESS, TSS, and RSS, etc. So now, in the meantime, so for the multicollinearity concerns, if your objective is to look into Multicollinearity issue, then obviously we have to see what is the correlation among these regressors. Then these are the possible co possible correlations, and if it is equal to zero, then obviously there is no multicollinearity. So you you have to assume that uh, uh, whatever model you have received, then uh, that model is absolutely best fitted, and it can be used for forecasting and policy. Use. But remember, when these are all equal to zero, then by default. Then most of the parameters will be significant, and your R square will be very high, and F will be also highly significant. But if these particular items are not equal to zero, if you go by case one, if all are not equal to zero uh, and uh, uh, not equal to zero, then uh, there is a multicollinearity. It's a serious problem. Even if you know R two R R two R one three R one four R two four R two three and R three four all are Equal but not equal to zero, then obviously it is also problem of multicollinearity. That means there may be possibility that uh, R12 equal to R13 or equal to R, uh, R14 may be. So it may be equal but the value cannot be equal to zero. Okay, a, a, if cannot equal to zero, then it is called as a multicollinearity issue. If it is equal to zero, then there is no such multicollinearity issue. So that means. Uh, uh, multicon so that means what is all about multicollinearity multicollinearity is having the uh, existence of linear relationship among the uh, regressor it is the it is not the uh, you know it is the degree of association it is the degree of association between two variables it is does not matter whether they are negatively correlated or positively correlated okay so that means so we like to know what is the degree only so that means we know uh, uh, R is always lies between minus one to the plus one. So, okay, so this is this is the standard uh, standard you know the tricks how you have to integrate with the multicollinearity issue. Okay, so this is the standard tricks we have to issue in the multicollinearity angle. So that means uh, when uh, R is simply here represented as a correlation coefficient, but I have not specifically highlighted any subscript here because. It is generalized. If it is with respect to first and second variable, then put one, th one, two. If it is first and third variable, you put one, three. If it is second and four, you put two, four. Like this, you have to, uh, you have to abbreviate and you have to interpret accordingly. So now, uh, in any case, R is considered as a correlation coefficient. It should be in between minus one to one. So that means, if I will take a range here, so if I will take a range here, then this is zero. This is, uh, this is one. This is minus one. Okay. So now, if in a particular regression, so whatever correlation coefficients can possible, that to in among the regressors only. So every every relationship and every correlation should be tends to this particular uh, circle zero. Then obviously there is no such multicollinear. But if any other point, if you find there in a, uh, uh, tracking, so then there is multicollinear, whether it is left side or whether it is right side. So the Nature of relationship is not important for multicollinearity issue. It is the degree of association is very important. If the degree is high, then it is a high multicollinearity issue. If the degree is low, it is a low multicollinearity issue. So, how extent in what context we have to you can say uh, we have to look this matters or we have to consider this problem. 
so that is uh, uh, that we have to take care here so, okay so now let's see here so uh, our game plan is like this so this is y and this is say uh, x1 okay this is x2 okay this is x2 and this is you can say x3 and this is you can call it x4 okay that means obviously the variables which you have taken x1 x uh, x1 this is x2 this is x4 okay the variable which have taken then obviously by default there is some degree of association with y so it is by uh, it should be otherwise you cannot go for econometric modeling that means so you has a function of x1 x2 x3 x4 so that means there should be some connection with some degree of association between y x1 so y x2 then y x3 then you know y x4 okay so this can be uh, as usual there should be okay so that means in that case you have to put r y x4 okay so this is r y x3 then this is r y x2 this is r y x1 so this is how you have to abbreviate but in this context this should not be equal to 0 if this should not be equal to this should be equal to 0 then that variable cannot be in the system okay so this is how uh, how this is how the system all about the econometric modeling so that means there is some relationship correlation must be with dependent to independent variable but correlation should not be among the independent variables okay so that means x1 x2 and a, 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 x1 x3 x1 x4 or x2 x3 or x2 x4 or x3 x4 these are not uh, 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 means our concern it should not be there so that means the variables which included in the system should be completely independent okay that is the fundamental issue or fundamental agenda of all econometric modeling so the variables which we have chosen or which we have included in the systems that two independent variables should be totally independent to each other okay totally independent to each other then the clustering or the uh, influence of independent variable to dependent variable will be very accurate very perfect very systematic and very feasible okay so that means so we like to know this particular setup how is it the entire system so okay this is little bit you know very complicated pictures okay because why i am saying multi curve unit has a two two dimensional issues one dimensional issue is the nature of relationship another dimensional issue is the degree of association okay so for example uh, nature is concerned either it is negative or positive so that is not our concern okay so we should not bother about to having the negative association whether r is negative or r is positive so we like to know what is the value of r so is it close to minus 1 or is it close to plus 1 or is it close to 0 or is it close to again 0 that means so the trend is like this okay so the uh, if it is zero here this is plus one and this is minus one so that means whether the trend is this side or whether this trend is this side whether this trend is this side or whether this trend is this side so these are all you know correlation coefficient this is these are all correlation coefficient uh, among the regressors so x1 x2 then uh, you say uh, x1 x3 uh, uh, this is x2 x3 uh, the, this is uh, uh, you know uh, this is you can say r x 3 x 4 so like this these are all so you first you, you first you know find out the correlation coefficient let us say po, uh, uh, correlation coefficient between x 1 and x 2 is coming you know 0.7 so you will track here so this particular component will call it r x 1 x 2 ok so let us say we will get uh, you know x 2 x 3 is point, uh, point, uh, point minus 0.9 minus 0 0.9 so this particular angle so this is called as a r23 okay so r23 so this is correlation coefficient between 2 and 3 so negative related at, at the higher level so we are not bothering whether you are here or whether you are this is the this is the you know initial setup okay so whether you are in this direction or whether you this direction that is not our issue our issue is the what is this position where is that position whether it is close to one or whether uh, whether it is close to minus 1 or whether it is close to plus 1 or whether it is close to 0 or whether it is close to 0 that means so uh, first part of the uh, problem that is you know nature of the relationship is not so important but the degree of association is very important so for this degree of association is concerned so obviously you know uh, the degree will starts from 0 to 1 uh, plus 1 and you know 0 to minus 1 so you will go 0 by minus 1 
and it will go by 0 to plus 1. So, now the moment it will increase this side or increase this side, then the multicollinearity problem will be you know it will be more and more and more dangerous. Okay. So, that means so, the virus will be aggravated accordingly. So, the degree of you know influence for instance it, it the um, you know boundary is like this. So, it will affect first pile, second pile, third pile. So, it will automatically highlight it. So, if it is very small level then the, the problem is in not such issues. That means, uh, let us say in a folder there are you know 100 files. If it is affecting only one file then obviously, it is not a serious problem, but if it is affecting you know uh, 99 uh, files, then obviously it will be serious problem. That is how you have to look into this multicollinearity issue. Okay. So now, so it is the degree which which you know uh, uh, brings the uh, issue of multicollinearity. So now I will uh, so far as the degree is concerned. So the degree may be uh, zero. If it is zero, then no multicollinearity. If degree is very very low, then it is very very minor multicollinearity. Okay. If it is very, uh, the degree is very, uh, you know, or you can say low, then obviously multicollinearity is also low. If the degree is um, very high, then obviously multicollinearity is very high. If the degree is very, very high, then obviously multicollinearity is very, very high. If the degree is extremely, extremely high, what, do, what is mean by extremely high? That means it is exclusively equal to plus 1 or exclusively equal to minus 1, then it is very, very serious or extremely serious problem for multicollinearity. So, that means this type this type of situation model you should not consider that model at all for forecasting or policy use. So, you have to this means close to 1 means 2 variables are same. So, that means we have to drop 1 variables. Okay. For instance, I will take a series years. So, let us say x 1 and x 2. Okay. So, I will put 1, 2, 3, 4 only. Then by default, I will put here uh, 6, then you know 7, then you will put 3, uh, uh, 8, then I will put here 9. Okay. So, this is one series and this is another series. So, I will like to correlate. Then by the instance, I will get I think positive correlations. Okay. It is a positive correlations then that to 1 only because uh, this x 1 and x 2 are linearly dependent x 2 is the uh, you know uh, uh, item plus 5 or uh, every case item plus 5 1 plus 5 2 plus 5 3 plus 5 5 plus. there are many ways such relationship can be relationship may be additive may be multiplicity may be divisions may be something something so in that case it will give you signal the linear, linear dependency so, that means the variables are linearly independent should be considered a, into the system and that system will be more accurate, more perfect, more practical. Okay. But uh, if you know uh, if the variables are uh, linearly dependent LD then obviously the system is very inconsistent, practically not valid and it is uh, totally infeasible in region. So, you have to be bring into the feasible regions. Okay. So, how do you go for that particular uh, uh, structures all together. So, okay. so we, we like to know what is this shape of this degree uh, you know multicollinearity issue. Since the degree g starts from 0 to extremely high then obviously the multicollinearity will be extremely high. So, how does it look like? Okay. So, that is our main concern. Let us see here. So, let us say uh, for knowing the you know uh, uh, the complexity of that particular problem with respect to low degree to high degree then we consider the system where there is a y variables and x 1 x 2 are 2 independent rows. that is the basic static point of multicollinearity. So, if it is less than uh, that then there is no such multicollinearity. you see very interesting. So, when you will go for econometric modeling then you, you start with the vibrated system the uh, econometric modeling is useless or cannot be possible when the system is only one variable and having no classification and the system will be the root of the system or starting point of the system is that it, it must have one dependent variable and one independent variable. But in that particular context multicollinearity is not at all pictures, okay. it is not at all coming there. So, now you add another variable y x 1 and x 2 then multicollinearity will start uh, adding in the process. So, if you add another variable then it will start another complexity, if you add another variable then it will start another complexity of multicollinearity. So, this is how the problem is extended, extended and extended. Okay. So, what you have to do? 
So, you have to show the degree of association let us say y equal to here dependent variables. Okay. So, this is y and this is x 1 and this is x 2. So, this in this case r 1 2 is exactly equal to 0. So, that means there is no connection between connection between x 1 and x 2. So, in that context in that context uh, this model is perfectly accurate perfectly fit for uh, you know forecasting and policy use. So, now I will take another model here y u y and this is x 1 and this is this is x 2. So, this is that means r 1 2 there is a relationship and if uh, I do not know whether positive or negative because we are not bothering about degree of s and nature of the relationship we know the degree of s. So, if that is the case let us say it is 0 0.2 only ok 0 0.2 or 0 minus 0 0.2. So, in that case it is called as a this is no multicollinearity issue this is no multicollinearity multicollinearity issue ok this is base mod uh, means minor multicollinearity I, I can call it minor multicollinearity issue ok. So, similarly there is another issue here ok. So, this is called as a moderate moderate multicollinearity issue ok. So, I will take another case here ok. So, this is very high multicollinearity very high multicollinearity issue. I will take another case ok. I will call, call, call like this. So, this is called as a uh, perfectly multicollinearity issue. In fact, we can, cannot say perfectly because there is something missing here. Perfectly means it is poor uh, the two two circles which merge each other equally. So, in that case this is x 1 and this is x 2 this is y. So, in that case it is a very 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 high very 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 high multicollinearity high multicollinearity ok. So, this is very serious issue for econometric problem this is also serious issue problem this is in fact also small issue of multicollinearity problem this is very minor issue this is no issue at all. So, this is how the shape of the multicollinearity is all about ok. So, now we get to know what is the uh, how do you define the term multicollinearity what is the nature of multicollinearity and uh, now we are uh, we are going to discuss why multicollinearity happens in the uh, in so, uh, occur actually why multicollinearity occurs in the econometric modeling or in a statistical and statistical process. So, the reason is that there are many reasons ok. So, one standard reason is that most of the variables in the uh, uh, environment are very interdependent it is very difficult to find two variables which are completely independent. If it is completely independent yes they may be we will find there are variables which are completely independent, but you know when you are targeting the in, 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 in inter uh, you know causality issue then obviously we are looking for some interdependence ok. We are looking for some interdependence in that to dependent to independent only, but you know if you know within excess if some x is function of another x. So, that means that that itself is you know uh, regression analysis altogether means if you see I I am putting here so y equal to function of uh, you know x 1 x 2 x 1 x 2 x 3 uh, up to a you know a say x 4 ok. Then I will find x 3 is a function of x 4 ok or uh, I will find x 2 is a function of x 4. So, that means so, x 3 can be considered as another y, x 2 is considered as another y because it is altogether dependent side ok. So, that means, so it, it, it is you know it is this st structure or understanding only. So, so, uh, so the cause is that uh, you know since most of the variables are interdependent in nature. So, by default or you know by process natural process multi is always be there in the uh, uh, econometric model. But the thing is uh, uh, how uh, whether you will go ahead with multicollinearity or you have to get its solutions. You see uh, that is depends upon your objective specification. If your objective is you know go for uh, forecasting or predictability then obviously in that case high R square having uh, low significance errors low significance of the parameters can be considered as the best models ok. So, that means, if you go for, for forecasting or prediction issue that times high R square will give you better prediction and better forecasting, but when you will go for reliability of the uh, uh, reliability of the modeling that times. So, you need to have both significance of the parameters exclusively highly significant 
and the significant uh, high value of r square and explicitly uh, uh, highly statistically significant for f statistics ok. So, uh, this is how the objective of reliability is concerned, but if your ob objective is you know prediction only prediction and forecasting then obviously, a multi coordinate is not a such serious problem, but reliability case it is a very serious problem, but uh, if we go together then obviously, a minor multi coordinate or you know slightly moderate multi coordinate is not a serious issue you have to go ahead with because it is very difficult to find a system where all the variable independent variables are totally independent. So, there may be some kind of interconnections ok. So, it is very difficult. So, that is why by default there will be some relationship, but that relation should be very very at the minor level otherwise if it is a high level what is the point to, to take or to consider two variables differently. So, it has to be one variable only for instance. Uh, in uh, economic environment or you can say uh, management environment we have we have you know GDP and per capita GDP ok. So, GDP is considered as a some uh, sometimes is a variable and per capita GDP is sometimes considered as a variable both both have different interpretation different you know uh, structures, but you know sometimes their impact more or less you know um, impact may be uh, some way contradictory or you can say other way around. For instance, uh, 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 the uh, 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 for instance, you may find some kind of relationship between GDP and per capita GDP because per capita GDP is derived from GDP. If per capita GDP is derived from the GDP, then obviously GDP is derived from per capita GDP because per capita GDP is nothing but GDP by population. So this is how means I am just highlighting one example so how multi community can be serious issue. For instance, another case you take what is the impact of FDI on stock price and another side you know I, I will take another variable say y a x 1 which is represented as a F, FDI as a percentage of GDP on you can say stock price. So, FDI is one part of one variables and FDI as a percentage of GDP is another variable because the game plan is completely different FDI there is variables and FDI by GDP then the is game plan is completely different but somehow if you integrate FDI to FDI percent as a percentage of GDP means if, a, if in a particular system if I will use stock price as a dependent variable and FDI FDI as a percentage of GDP is another two independent variables then I, I definitely find there is some you know linearity between FDI and per capita uh, this FDI as a percentage of, uh, percentage of GDP. So, that means in, uh, that means in that system will be perfectly ok. So, whether uh, means if you use only FDI or you can use FDI as a percentage of GDP either one you can use then the model will be perfectly ok, but you know, but uh, if you go, you go with two variables then obviously, the complexity will start and it will be serious multi because for that you know I, I am very very beginning I have mentioned that your theoretical knowledge must be very high or external knowledge must be very high with respect to various theories and various statistical knowledge, various mathematical knowledge, then you will enjoy this econometric modeling. Otherwise, it is very contradictory. This type of issue, if you have no such theoretical knowledge or even outside knowledge, then you cannot uh, detect particular variable whether they are correlated. Because, but we know the definitions and we know the setup that is why we are saying. For instance, if there is a two variables, uh, you know say, uh, uh, I, will, I will call you know money supply and I will uh, use the term M3 for Indian uh, Indian uh, India point of view ok. So, money supply uh, money supply M3 is money supply because money supply has a different uh, uh, groups. So, M3 is one of the such groups. So, if you will take money supply and if you will for you know forget about data you can artificially generate data, but if you put money supply and you know and this M3 then obviously, there will be some kind of multi coin either you use or instance if you go by money supply then obviously, you will find there is a some data with respect to MT and so M2 and some data with respect to M3, but both will come under money supply. So, now if I am fitting any models with respect to M2 and M3 then obviously, there is some connection between M2 and M3 either you will go by M2 uh, separately and, and go with the, you know y with m2 and y with m3 separately and i will check it which one is the best for the uh, best fitted so then accordingly i will consider that variables otherwise if you go together with y 
m2 and m3 then obviously there is a serious multicolonality this is how oh, you know uh, uh, this means this is one of the strong cause for you know issuing multicolonality problems so another problem is that so uh, a introducing lag in the system so we'll discuss detail when we'll go for time series modeling so when you will introduce lag in the system then by default it will generate multicolonality which i have highlighted very clearly in the last class okay so then uh, you know mathematical manipulation uh, um, mathematical formulation also creates multicolonality problems so you must be very very uh, uh, perfect uh, how you will go for mathematical formulation of this particular problem okay so then you know uh, inclusion of uh, unnecessary variables in the system will also uh, have a multicolonality problem so again with respect to sample size a, a low or a high can also uh, uh, multicolonality problem you know econometry modeling is, is sometimes it's a fuzzy game for instance you know take a case of you know uh, cause of multicolonality with respect to uh, size of samples if the size of sample then sometimes there may be some collinearity but later stage these two variables will diverge uh, themselves then the obviously there is no such multicolonality but uh, you know there is another, uh, another uh, interesting problem first they will diverge then after a certain, certain point of time they will converge so that means if you take total time length then uh, you will find there is some multicolonality but if you see if you classify the structure into two different shapes for instance uh, uh, for a particular point of say oh, 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 952 you can say 2000 for instance i have 952 2000 data point okay so now first they diverge like this they diverge like this then after particular point of time they will converge okay so that means you make the division here you take this one along this you take this one one side and this one another side then obviously you will find there is no, no such multicolonality but if you take total uh, sample periods then obviously then there is a, a you know serious multicolonality problem so that means sample size itself will make the game uh, interesting or it can also generate problems so you must be very careful how you have to choose the sample size whether you have to go for high sample size or whether you will go for low sample size or whether you will go for optimum sample size. So, it is depending upon the structure how you have to uh, coming in with, with that picture. So, okay, this is how the causes of multicolonality. Then, uh, what are the consequences of multicolonality? So, consequences is that you see we, we have already discussed uh, when we will go for uh, you know when will go for overall fitness of the I means uh, goodness fit of the models or best fitted models then obviously we will go by you know uh, significance of the parameters but the parameters should follow some principles which we call is the blue okay best linear unbiased estimator best linear unbiased estimator that is called as a best linear unbiased unbiased estimators until unless you receive this uh, you know properties that means the estimated parameters which you have received in the systems should be unbiased so should have minimum variance and should be very very consistent okay Con should be very very consistent what is unbiasedness means the different bias should be equal to zero that is the difference between expected value and true value okay like this m means unbiased means a e with uh, beta head should be equal to beta okay so now uh, if take another uh, so same we will take another parameter say beta star head if variance of beta head variance of uh, beta head is less than to variance of you can say beta star head then beta is considered as the best parameter than the beta star head okay mm -hmm. similarly consistent this is called as a minimum variance property this is unbiased property similarly the, the, uh, there is a, you know if you will together if you will together uh, concept, uh, if you club together then it is called as a consistency property that means when n stands to infinity then you know that means if you increase sample size then there is enough chance that expected value of particular parameter should be equal to true value that means if for this instance e beta had equal to beta and in the second instance uh, uh, you know variance of beta uh, head uh, should be less than to variance of another beta head and variance of beta head should be close to zero when n stands to infinity that is what consistency property if all these properties are maintained then the then the model estimated model can be considered as the best fitted model 
but uh, if all these properties are going against means if it is not unbiased if it is not based if it is not uh, having minimum variance if it is not uh, consistent then obviously uh, uh, the model has to be re redesigned and one such problem is multicon if multicon is there then uh, you know it will affect uh, the uh, unbiasedness property it will affect the minimum variance property it will affect the you can say consistency property and so many other things are there linear in nature param the estimate uh, estimator should be linear in uh, parameters etc okay so this is how you have to observe so that means um, so for the con consequence is that so involvement of multi or pre the presence of multi will lead to uh, make the system uh, deviation from the blue so it will it, uh, it will take diverge from the blue component so as a result if it is diverging from the blue then obviously so the model cannot be considered as the best so you have to find out the solution how they will converge to the blue that means this should go uh, the, you have to choose a system where all these parameters should be you know um, follows the blue property the best unbiased estimators then 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 you can use for forecasting and policy use okay so this is how the major consequence of the multi community problem so then next is how to detect okay so for the detection is concerned i have already mentioned uh, the way we have discussed uh, one of the standard tricks how to detect the multi is to correlate among the regressors suppose there are five variables so accordingly you have to find out x1 x2 x1 x3 x1 x4 x1 x5 similarly x2 x3 x2 x4 x2 x5 x3 x4 x3 x5 x4 x5 these are the possible correlations then you check whether all these correlations are uh, zero or not if it is zero then it is you know free from multi if few are zero and few are not zero then obviously there is some kind of or uh, multi is there so, okay so if some kind of multi is there then you have to check what is the degree of that multi or degree of association if it is a high then it will it has a strong negative impact okay and the best fit um, best fit of the model and if it has a minor less degree is very minor or very low then obviously the impact is very less on that you know feasibility of the models so this is how you know uh, uh, we have to detect the structure of multi -colonity. this is one of the standard detections um, standard measure how you have to detect the multi -colonity. there are you know uh, uh, as a statistician or econometricians there is lots of various clues how you have to detect the multi -colonity. for a standard reason is that uh, very beginning in uh, in my first lecture of this multi -colonity, i mentioned that so we look for two of specific objective that is significance of the parameters and significance of the overall fitness of the model so now for significance of the parameters then we are looking for you know uh, our objective must be all parameters should be highly significant r square should be high and you know f should be statistically or highly significant but the, uh, the that is the requirement but uh, ultimately we have two different uh, uh, other options that is you know few few parameters may be significant and others are not significant and r square will be high and f will be very high this is one situation and another situation having lower square and you know uh, having lower square and having few parameters are statistical significant then uh, it is also you can say uh, problem of multi continuity so in that context you what you have to do you have to you have to go for lots of permutation combinations and you have to find out whether there is a multi and what extent the multi is all about okay so this is how you have to detect the multi once you know very standard thing is that if you are you know uh, if you, your parameters all parameters are not statistical significant and you know r square is coming high then this is one of the you know inspection method how you have to observe or how you have to expect that there should be multi -connected. but you have to go again every time uh, by you know detection criteria how to uh, detect the multi in, in fact we sometimes uh, you econometrician sometimes use the partial correlation coefficient is the detection measures you know if high high multiple correlation and you know low part partial correlation coefficient then it also uh, indicate you uh, uh, means uh, indicates you that there is a problem of multi -colonial. this is how you have to go for detection criteria so now 
so for the solution is concerned there is a number of solution you can uh, find out this multi coordinate issue and one of the standard solution is the either you go for optimum sample size or uh, if there is a multi still there is a multi coordinate problem so either you increase sample or decrease sample till you get the model which is free from multi coordinate this is one of the standard trick how you have to uh, go for solution okay and second thing is uh, you check whether the variables are closely related by inspection or you know by theoretical knowledge if you know that few variables or two variables are closely related to each other it is better to drop that variables then if it uh, with rest of the variables the, there is enough chance that the model will be best fitted where all parameters will be statistical significant and overall fitness will be very high ok. So, this is another way how you have to get the solution ok. Besides, there are standard uh, you know there, like this there are so many tricks how you have to get the solutions with respect to different uh, cause then solutions will be multiple in nature. Uh, but uh, one standard criteria is that so you have to first point out why this problem usually happen and for accordingly you have to apply this solution criteria so that is how you have to solve this multi coordinate problems so now uh, with this you know uh, sometimes you know there are different techniques if you apply the problem of multi coordinate ca can be solved you know uh, i have mentioned that econometric is a very fuzzy game sometimes you know by the uh, use of different techniques the, the automatic the multi coordinate problem may be automatically solved because the technique itself will take care of this multi coordinate issue this is very interesting and in fact you know uh, to today's world to we are in you know process of software uh, various softwares. So, this is software Raj. So, if you apply different softwares with different application, different techniques, then the problem of multi coordinate will automatically uh, uh, you know solve and you will get the best fitted models ok. So, now uh, with the uh, you know before ending this particular class, so I like to highlight two things here. So, you see uh, uh, so for the multi coordinate is concerned uh, you start with your specific objective specification if your objective is the predictions only then obviously multi coordinate is not a serious issue but if your objective is the reliability uh, uh, you know issue then obviously the multi coordinate is a serious problem and you you have to first solve the multi coordinate then you have to use for forecasting if that is not the case then obviously it will go other way around with this we will conclude this particular session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.